Heparin, Wikipedia Audio Heparin, also known as unfractionated heparin, is medication which is used as an anticoagulant. Specifically it is used to treat and prevent deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, and arterial thromboembolism. It is also used in the treatment of heart attacks and unstable angina. It is given by injection into a vein. Other uses include inside test tubes and kidney dialysis machines. Common side effects include bleeding, pain at the injection site, and low blood platelets. Serious side effects include heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. Greater care is needed in those with poor kidney function. Heparin appears to be relatively safe for use during pregnancy and breastfeeding. Heparin is a naturally occurring glycosaminoglycan. The discovery of heparin was announced in 1916. It is on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines, the most effective and safe medicines needed in a health system. The wholesale cost in the developing world, when used for prevention, is about 9.63 to 37 US dollars and 95 cents per month. In the United States it costs about 25 to 50 US dollars per month. A fractionated version of heparin, known as low molecular weight heparin is also available. Medical Use Heparin is a naturally occurring anticoagulant produced by basophils and mast cells. In therapeutic doses, it acts as an anticoagulant, preventing the formation of clots and extension of existing clots within the blood. While heparin does not break down clots that have already formed, it allows the body's natural clot lysis mechanisms to work normally to break down clots that have formed. Heparin is generally used for anticoagulation for the following conditions. Heparin and its low molecular weight derivatives are effective in preventing deep vein thromboses and pulmonary emboli in people at risk but no evidence indicates any one is more effective than the other in preventing mortality. Acute coronary syndrome, e.g., enstemi, atrial fibrillation, deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, cardiopulmonary bypass for heart surgery, ECMO circuit for extracorporeal life support, hemofiltration, indwelling central or peripheral venous catheters. A serious side effect of heparin is heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, caused by an immunological reaction that makes platelets a target of immunological response, resulting in the degradation of platelets, which causes thrombocytopenia. This condition is usually reversed on discontinuation and in general can be avoided with the use of synthetic heparins. Also, a benign form of thrombocytopenia is associated with early heparin use, which resolves without stopping heparin. Two non-hemorrhagic side effects of heparin treatment are known. The first is elevation of serum aminotransferase levels which has been reported in as many as 80% of patients receiving heparin. This abnormality is not associated with liver dysfunction, and it disappears after the drug is discontinued. The other complication is hyperkalemia, which occurs in 5-10% to of patients receiving heparin, and is the result of heparin-induced aldosterone suppression. The hyperkalemia can appear within a few days after the onset of heparin therapy. More rarely, the side effects alopecia and osteoporosis can occur with chronic use. As with many drugs, overdoses of heparin can be fatal. In September 2006, Heparin received worldwide publicity when three prematurely born infants died after they were mistakenly given overdoses of heparin at an Indianapolis hospital. Heparin is contraindicated in those with risk of bleeding, 
severe liver disease, or severe hypertension. Protamine sulfate has been given to counteract the anticoagulant effect of heparin. It may be used in those who overdose on heparin or to reverse heparin's effect when it is no longer needed. A equals 1 HPN residues in 2S0 conformation JMOL viewer, B equals van der Waals radius space filling model of A, C equals 1 HPN residues in 1C4 conformation JMOL viewer D equals van der Waals radius space filling model of C. Heparin's normal role in the body is unclear. Heparin is usually stored within the secretory granules of mast cells and released only into the vasculature at sites of tissue injury. It has been proposed that, rather than anticoagulation, the main purpose of heparin is defense at such sites against invading bacteria and other foreign materials. In addition, it is observed across a number of widely different species, including some invertebrates that do not have a similar blood coagulation system. It is a highly sulfated glycosaminoglycan. It has the highest negative charge density of any known biological molecule. In addition to the bovine and porcine tissue from which pharmaceutical grade heparin is commonly extracted, it has also been extracted and characterized from Adverse Effects The biological activity of heparin within species 611 is unclear and further supports the idea that the main physiological role of heparin is not anticoagulation. These species do not possess any blood coagulation system similar to that present within the species listed 1-5. The above list also demonstrates how heparin has been highly evolutionarily conserved, with molecules of a similar structure being produced by a broad range of organisms belonging to many different phyla. In nature, heparin is a polymer of varying chain size. Unfractionated heparin as a pharmaceutical is heparin that has not been fractionated to sequester the fraction of molecules with low molecular weight. In contrast, low molecular weight heparin has undergone fractionation for the purpose of making its pharmacodynamics more predictable. Often either UFH or LMWH can be used, in some situations one or the other is preferable. Heparin binds to the enzyme inhibitor antithrombin 3 causing a conformational change that results in its activation through an increase in the flexibility of its reactive site loop. The activated it then inactivates thrombin, factor XA, and other proteases. The rate of inactivation of these proteases by it can increase by up to 1,000-fold due to the binding of heparin. Heparin binds to antithrombin via a specific pentasaccharide sulfation sequence contained within the heparin polymer. The conformational change in it on heparin binding mediates its inhibition of factor XA. For thrombin inhibition, however, thrombin must also bind to the heparin polymer at a site proximal to the pentasaccharide. The highly negative charge density of heparin contributes to its very strong electrostatic interaction with thrombin. The formation of a ternary complex between it, thrombin, and heparin results in the inactivation of thrombin. For this reason, heparin's activity against thrombin is size-dependent, with the ternary complex requiring at least 18 saccharide units for efficient formation. In contrast, anti-factor XA activity requires only the pentasaccharide binding site. This size difference has led to the development of low molecular weight heparins and, more recently, to fondaparinux as pharmaceutical anticoagulants. LMWHs and fondaparinux target anti-factor XA activity rather than antithrombin activity with the aim of facilitating a more subtle regulation of coagulation and an improved therapeutic index. The chemical structure of fondaparinux is shown above.
it is a synthetic pentasaccharide, whose chemical structure is almost identical to the at binding pentasaccharide sequence that can be found within polymeric heparin and heparan sulfate. With LMWH and fondaparinux, the risk of osteoporosis and heparin-induced thrombocytopenia is reduced. Monitoring of the activated partial thromboplastin time is also not required and does not reflect the anticoagulant effect, as APTT is insensitive to alterations in factor XA. Contraindications Antidote to heparin Deniparoid, a mixture of heparan sulfate, dermatin sulfate, and chondroitin sulfate can be used as an anticoagulant in patients having developed HIT. Because deniparoid does not contain heparin or heparin fragments, cross-reactivity of deniparoid with heparin-induced antibodies is reported as less than 10%. Physiological Function Evolutionary Conservation Pharmacology Mechanism of Action Administration The effects of heparin are measured in the lab by the partial thromboplastin time, one of the measures of the time it takes the blood plasma to clot. Partial thromboplastin time should not be confused with prothrombin time, or PT which measures blood clotting time through a different pathway of the coagulation cascade. Heparin is given parenterally because it is not absorbed from the gut, due to its high negative charge and large size. It can be injected intravenously or subcutaneously, intramuscular injections are avoided because of the potential for forming hematomas. Because of its short biologic half-life of about one hour, heparin must be given frequently or as a continuous infusion. Unfractionated heparin has a half-life of about one to two hours after infusion, whereas LMWH has a half-life of four to five hours. The use of LMWH has allowed once daily dosing, thus not requiring a continuous infusion of the drug. If long-term anticoagulation is required, heparin is often used only to commence anticoagulation therapy until an oral anticoagulant e.g. warfarin takes effect. The American College of Chest Physicians publishes clinical guidelines on heparin dosing. Natural Degradation or Clearance Unfractionated heparin has a half-life of about 1 to 2 hours after infusion whereas low molecular weight heparin S half-life is about four times longer. Lower doses of heparin have a much shorter half-life than larger ones. Heparin binding to macrophage cells is internalized and depolymerized by the macrophages. It also rapidly binds to endothelial cells, which precludes the binding to antithrombin that results in anticoagulant action. For higher doses of heparin, endothelial cell binding will be saturated, such that clearance of heparin from the bloodstream by the kidneys will be a slower process. Native heparin is a polymer with a molecular weight ranging from 3 to 30 kata, although the average molecular weight of most commercial heparin preparations is in the range of 12 to 15 kata. Heparin is a member of the glycosaminoglycan family of carbohydrates and consists of a variably sulfated repeating disaccharide unit. The main disaccharide units that occur in heparin are shown below. The most common disaccharide unit is composed of a 2-O-sulfated egeronic acid and 6-O-sulfated, N-sulfated glucosamine, e glcns For example, this makes up 85% of heparins from beef lung and about 75% of those from porcine intestinal mucosa. Not shown below are the rare disaccharides containing a 3-O-sulfated glucosamine or a free amine group. 
Under physiological conditions, the ester and amide sulfate groups are deprotonated and attract positively charged count aryans to form a heparin salt. Heparin is usually administered in this form as an anticoagulant. GLCA equals beta D, glucuronic acid, EDOA equals alpha L, egeronic acid, EDOA equals 2O sulfo alpha L egeronic acid, glucnac equals 2 deoxy 2 acetamido alpha D glucopyranosil, GLCNS equals 2 deoxy 2 sulfamido alpha D glucopyranosil. GLCNS equals 2 deoxy 2 sulfamido alpha D glucopyranosil 6 O sulfate. One unit of heparin is an amount approximately equivalent to 0.002 mg of pure heparin, which is the quantity required to keep 1 ml of cat's blood fluid for 24 hours at 0 degrees Celsius. The three-dimensional structure of heparin is complicated because egeronic acid may be present in either of two low-energy conformations when internally positioned within an oligosaccharide. The conformational equilibrium is influenced by sulfation state of adjacent glucosamine sugars. Nevertheless, the solution structure of a heparin dodecasaccharide composed solely of 6 GLCNS dual repeat units has been determined using a combination of NMR spectroscopy and molecular modeling techniques. Two models were constructed, one in which all EDOA were in the 2S0 conformation, and one in which they are in the 1C4 conformation. However, no evidence suggests that changes between these conformations occur in a concerted fashion. These models correspond to the protein data bank code 1HPN. In the image above. Chemistry. In these models, heparin adopts a helical conformation, the rotation of which places clusters of sulfate groups at regular intervals of about 17 angstroms on either side of the helical axis. Either chemical or enzymatic depolymerization techniques or a combination of the two underlie the vast majority of analyses carried out on the structure and function of heparin and heparan sulfate. Heparin Structure the enzymes traditionally used to digest heparin or HS are naturally produced by the soil bacterium Pedobacter heparinus. This bacterium is capable of using either heparin or HS as its sole carbon and nitrogen source. To do so, it produces a range of enzymes such as lyases, glucuronidases, sulfosterases, and sulfamidases. The lyases have mainly been used in heparin HS studies. The bacterium produces three lyases, heparinases I, 2 and 3 and each has distinct substrate specificities as detailed below. The lyases cleave heparin HS by a beta elimination mechanism. This action generates an unsaturated double bond between C4 and C5 of the uronate residue. The C4-C5 unsaturated uronate is termed delta UA or UA. It is a sensitive UV chromophore and allows the rate of an enzyme digest to be followed, as well as providing a convenient method for detecting the fragments produced by enzyme digestion. Three-dimensional structure Depolymerization techniques Enzymatic Nitrous acid can be used to chemically depolymerize heparin HS. Nitrous acid can be used at pH 1.5 or at a higher pH of 4. Under both conditions, nitrous acid affects deaminative cleavage of the chain. At both high and low pH, deaminative cleavage occurs between GLCNS glca and GLCNS CDUA albeit at a slower rate at the higher pH. The deamination reaction, and therefore chain cleavage, is regardless of O-sulfation carried by either monosaccharide unit. At low pH, 
deaminative cleavage results in the release of inorganic SO4, and the conversion of GLCNS into anhydromannose. Low pH nitrous acid treatment is an excellent method to distinguish N-sulfated polysaccharides such as heparin and HS from non-N-sulfated polysaccharides such as chondroitin sulfate and dermatin sulfate, chondroitin sulfate and dermatin sulfate not being susceptible to nitrous acid cleavage. Current clinical laboratory assays for heparin rely on an indirect measurement of the effect of the drug rather than on a direct measure of its chemical presence. These include activated partial thromboplastin time and anti-factor XA activity. The specimen of choice is usually fresh, non-hemolyzed plasma from blood that has been anticoagulated with citrate, fluoride, or oxalate. Heparin was discovered by J. McLean and William Henry Howell in 1916 although it did not enter clinical trials until 1935. It was originally isolated from canine liver cells, hence its name. McLean was a second-year medical student at Johns Hopkins University, and was working under the guidance of Howell investigating procoagulant preparations, when he isolated a fat-soluble phosphatide anticoagulant in canine liver tissue. In 1918, Howell coined the term heparin for this type of fat-soluble anticoagulant. In the early 1920s, Howell isolated a water-soluble polysaccharide anticoagulant, which he also termed heparin, although it was different from the previously discovered phosphatide preparations. McLean's work as a surgeon probably changed the focus of the Howell group to look for anticoagulants, which eventually led to the polysaccharide discovery. In the 1930s, several researchers were investigating heparin. Eric Horpies at Karolinska Institutet published his research on the structure of heparin in 1935 which made it possible for the Swedish company Vitramub to launch the first heparin product for intravenous use in 1936. Between 1933 and 1936, Connaught Medical Research Laboratories, then a part of the University of Toronto, perfected a technique for producing safe, non-toxic heparin that could be administered to patients, in a saline solution. The first human trials of heparin began in May 1935, and, by 1937, it was clear that Connaught's heparin was a safe, easily available, and effective as a blood anticoagulant. Prior to 1933, heparin was available in small amounts, was extremely expensive and toxic, and, as a consequence, of no medical value. Considering the animal source of pharmaceutical heparin, the numbers of potential impurities are relatively large compared with a wholly synthetic therapeutic agent. The range of possible biological contaminants includes viruses, bacterial endotoxins, transmissible spongiform encephalopathy agents, lipids, proteins, and DNA. During the preparation of pharmaceutical-grade heparin from animal tissues, impurities such as solvents, heavy metals, and extraneous cations can be introduced. However, the methods employed to minimize the occurrence and to identify and slash or eliminate these contaminants are well established and listed in guidelines and pharmacopoeias. The major challenge in the analysis of heparin impurities is the detection and identification of structurally related impurities. The most prevalent impurity in heparin is dermatin sulfate, also known as chondroitin sulfate B. The building block of DS is a disaccharide composed of 1,3 linked N acetylgalactosamine and a uronic acid residue connected via 1,4 linkages to form the polymer. DS is composed of three possible uronic acid and four possible hexosamine building blocks. 
the presence of ejeronic acid in DS distinguishes it from chondroitin sulfate A and C and likens it to heparin and HS. DS has a lower negative charge density overall compared to heparin. A common natural contaminant, DS is present at levels of 17% in heparin API, but has no proven biological activity that influences the anticoagulation effect of heparin. In December 2007, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration recalled a shipment of heparin because of bacterial growth in several unopened syringes of this product. S. marcescens can lead to life-threatening injuries and slash or death. In March 2008, major recalls of heparin were announced by the FDA due to contamination of the raw heparin stock imported from China. According to the FDA, the adulterated heparin killed 81 people in the United States. The adulterant was identified as an oversulfate derivative of chondroitin sulfate, a popular shellfish-derived supplement often used for arthritis, which was intended to substitute for actual heparin in potency tests. According to the New York Times, Problems with heparin reported to the agency include difficulty breathing, nausea, vomiting, excessive sweating and rapidly falling blood pressure that in some cases led to life-threatening shock. In 2006, Petra Zelenka, a nurse in the Czech Republic, deliberately administered large doses to patients, killing seven, and attempting to kill ten others. In 2007, a nurse at Cedars Sinai Medical Center mistakenly gave the 12 day old twins of actor Dennis Quaid a dose of heparin that was 1,000 times the recommended dose for infants. The overdose allegedly arose because the labeling and design of the adult and infant versions of the product were similar. The Quaid family subsequently sued the manufacturer, Baxter Healthcare Corp and settled with the hospital for $750,000. Prior to the Quaid accident, six newborn babies at Methodist Hospital in Indianapolis, Indiana, were given an overdose. Three of the babies died after the mistake. In July 2008, another set of twins born at Christus Spahn Hospital South, in Corpus Christi, Texas, died after an accidentally administered overdose of the drug. The overdose was due to a mixing error at the hospital pharmacy and was unrelated to the product's packaging or labeling. As of July 2008, the exact cause of the twin's death was under investigation. In March 2010, a two-year-old transplant patient from Texas was given a lethal dose of heparin at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. The exact circumstances surrounding her death are still under investigation. Pharmaceutical-grade heparin is derived from mucosal tissues of slaughtered meat animals such as porcine intestines or bovine lungs. Advances to produce heparin synthetically have been made in 2003 and 2008. In 2011, a chemoenzymatic process of synthesizing low molecular weight heparins from simple disaccharides was reported. As detailed in the table below, the potential is great for the development of heparin-like structures as drugs to treat a wide range of diseases in addition to their current use as anticoagulants. As a result of heparin's effect on such a wide variety of disease states, a number of drugs are indeed in development whose molecular structures are identical or similar to those found within parts of the polymeric heparin chain. Notes Chemical Detection in body fluids History other functions Society and culture Contamination recalls 2008 recall due to adulteration in drug from China 
Use in Homicide Overdose Issues Production Research